Mandalorians are not only popular for their exceptional fighting prowess, but also for their sleek and cool looking armor and equipment. But it did not always look like the recognizable symbol of Mandalorian culture that most Star Wars fans know and love from the movies. The first widely worn armor produced by the Mandalorians was known as the Crusader armor, and it was created at least 4,000 years before the Clone Wars and worn by the Mandalorian Crusaders. This armor differed in its design and effectiveness from user to user, with some adding sharp spikes and jagged wrappings to their suits, while others' armor was more sleek and was covered in long cloaks. The only real similarity between these armors was the slick T-shaped visor on their helmets. Early on, its main purpose was to protect the wearer from melee weapons rather than from ranged weapons like blasters, as the Mandalorians at the time favored melee combat. Though over time, upgrades were added to these suits, which added greater protection against blasters. Next came the Neo Crusader armor. It was created around 3,900 years before the Clone Wars, and was used by the Mandalorian Neo Crusaders. This armor was purposely designed to be used for the Mandalorian Wars and to create an image of unity for the Mandalorians as they fought against the Republic. The color of the armor signified rank, with blue being the standard one, crimson colored ones being for rally masters, gold for field marshals, and a special yellowish armor being for shock troopers. This armor improved from the last in that it was far stronger and more durable, as well as it contained a stealth generator that allowed for the wearer to pass enemy sensors undetected. Then came the Super Commando's armor, which was heavily inspired by Mandalore the Uniter's armor from over a thousand years before the Clone Wars. This modern Super Commando armor was vastly different from its predecessors. Instead of being a full body armor suit, it was just multiple plates that protected vital regions of the body, such as the chest and groin. These individual plates were attached to a waterproof full body suit of armor weave, which allowed for greater movement for the soldier. Many Mandalorians around this time also came to add multiple hidden weapon compartments mounted on their new armor, including dart shooters, wrist mounted rockets, and flamethrowers. Jetpacks were also made popular around this time and added to the mobility that this armor provided. Many others went on to modify their super commando armor, such as adding horns to their helmet and shoulder pads. Mandalorian armor would also go on to inspire the clone trooper armor, which held many similarities, such as the T-shaped visor. 20 years after the Clone Wars came a modified version of the Super Commando armor, known as the Crusader Mark III armor. It was created by the Death Watch Remnant and the Black Sun who then sold it to both the Galactic Empire and the Rebel Alliance. About 150 years after the Clone Wars, the most modern design of the Mandalorian armor seemed to cover the wearer's entire body, while also being flexible enough to allow them great movement. So it essentially combined the full protection of the Neo Crusader armor and the mobility of the Super Commando armor. The helmets were also slightly rounder and larger, and the visors tended to be wider and not bound to the traditional T shape. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.